And we want to welcome everyone who will be viewing this message uh, from Coombs, Grace United Church in Coombs. It is April the 17th, 2022, and we are wishing you a happy Easter morning. I recently read a story of a couple who'd been married for a very long time, and they had kind of a very, you know, off and on relationship. They were oftentimes bickering and fighting and it had been contentious for, for some years. But they decided that they'd you know, give it one last shot and they'd go on a, a holiday and they went to Israel. And they happened to get to Israel during Holy Week. And, uh, and they were enjoying themselves, although it was still a little bit tension there. Good Friday comes around. The husband has this massive heart attack and dies. And so, you know, now the wife has to make arrangements and they contact a funeral home and the funeral director in conversation with the wife says, well, there's a few options here. Uh, you can transport him back to Canada. Uh, that's gonna be about $35,000. Or you know what, for about $4,500, we can bury him in the holy city in Jerusalem. And she says, no question about it. We're shipping him back to Canada. He said, Seems a little odd, don't forget, $35,000 to ship him back and have a burial in Canada versus $4,500. She said, no, she said, you know what? I heard this story 2,000 years ago. There was a man who died on Good Friday and he came back to life on Easter Sunday and I just can't take that chance. <laughs> well, it is Easter Sunday morning and we're glad that you're here. This is the first time you've been to an Easter service. Well, we're glad that you're here. Tiffany, great to see you. We've seen Tiffany online, but it's nice to see people in person as well. And our longtime friend, Bill Laurie, so wonderful to have you, Bill, and some new folks online as well. If you are even a bit open to the idea Jesus really was who he claimed to be, God with us, then I hope today is gonna to be a very special day for you and that something transcendent and eternal in actual fact will happen in our time together and certainly in the week ahead as you kind of ponder this story, this ancient story of Jesus' resurrection nearly beyond belief and yet if it's so true then the power it has to change our lives. So we're talking about Jesus of Nazareth, a man who walked the earth, who made claims that he was God in the flesh. And before Jesus went to the cross, he spoke about the fact that in actual fact he would die a, a sacrificial death and then three days later rise again and Jesus even proclaimed subtly that his death on the cross would be a sacrifice for all people done out of love now it's a crazy love story if you believe that and of course if you have never been in love and done some crazy things for love you might think that the story of Jesus death on the cross is a little bit crazy. But all of us have done some crazy things for love, haven't we? Just ask my wife. Every day, she just doesn't know what's gonna happen because I'm so in love with her and I do some crazy things, even at this age of life. I did some crazier things when I was younger, right, honey? Yes. I'm much more mature right now, as you could well imagine. <laughs> but all of us crave to be loved. That's a fact of life. It's part of our DNA, part of what it is to be human is to love people and to want to be loved in return. Most of us find love in a spouse or a partner through our kids, our extended family or close friends. But you, would, would you be intrigued if I told you there is a love that is even deeper than that? A love that is experienced even beyond human relationships. A love that isn't dependent on our kind of fickle emotions or the circumstances in life which oftentimes take loved ones away from us. A love that is at the heart of the universe and that has power to drive out fear, can heal pain, can provide the deepest comfort through tough times and give us joy and hope that is eternal. In his book, Soul Craving, Erwin McManus talks about love this way. God is the passionate lover of humanity. God created you for love. You can't live without love, and you don't have to. Your soul craves love, 
and will find satisfaction with nothing less. And so you shouldn't be surprised that as you look for love, you keep running into God all over the place. I think the kind of love that Earl McManus is talking about, which most of us have kind of experienced at different places, is this deep longing to be loved, not just by friends or family, but to be longed to be loved by what we would know as our creator, as the one who formed the universe and even thought of us at the beginning of time. Of course, some people have never experienced that kind of love. Some people have had love elude them. Maybe you've loved someone, but they couldn't return that love to you in the same way. Or perhaps it was a love that you lost. Maybe a parent who abandoned you a long time ago, or a spouse or a partner who kind of walked out on your life. All of these situations that have left so many people cold or angry, or deeply wounded and starved for love. And there's so many other examples we know in the world around us of people who are starved for love. And when you're starved for love, sometimes you do some terrible things. I know that happens. But it doesn't have to end that way because God wants us to experience the deepest form of love known to human beings. So if you've ever done something crazy when you fell deeply in love, that might help to make sense as to why God did what God did in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. I mean, why would God take the chance of leaving eternity and heaven and all of those things and step into this messy world that we live in today? And certainly it was messy when Jesus walked on the earth. There was fighting, there was dispute, there was wars raging, there was occupation forces in his own nation. Why would Jesus go through that, and then the worst things, to be allowed to be tortured and hung up on a cross to die. Why would Jesus be crucified? And the Bible tells us that it was all done for love. God gambled everything, everything in Jesus Christ on the power of love to overcome all the darkness, hatred, bitterness, grief, and strife that this world has to offer. When you understand that the language of God is love and that the highest expression of love is sacrificial love, then why would, be, why would we be surprised that God chose that way, coming from heaven to earth in Christ to bear all of the problems that it is to be human and then ultimately to demonstrate his love for us by going to the cross? If you think of it as this deep, deep sacrificial love, which God wants us to experience, that has the power to heal our souls and to give us the love that we need that will change our lives and through us start to change the world. There's a moment in the Gospel of John after the crucifixion, just before the disciples understood that Jesus had been raised from the dead. I want to read part of this passage. This is from John's Gospel, chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb that Jesus had been placed into. And there had been a stone, as you remember in the story, that had been placed there so that no grave robbers could come and steal the body away. But the stone had been removed. And so she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken our Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. And so Peter and the other disciple started running towards the tomb. The other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but didn't go in. And then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. An interesting detail. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. And then he saw and believed. And they still didn't understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. They still didn't understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. How many of us 
in our life have come so close to the empty tomb, so close to believing in the power of the resurrection and of God's love for us that we're kind of just standing on the other side of that empty tomb and we're looking in. We've never taken that next step to really believe in the power of Jesus' resurrection and in the story of Jesus' resurrection. It's like we can get only so far, but we can't take that final step to really believe. Our doubts or our fears or whatever it is prevent us from fully believing. The first followers of Jesus were just like that. When they looked inside that empty tomb, they couldn't believe that Jesus was risen from the dead because they had heard the reports. If they hadn't seen Jesus being crucified, they'd certainly watched Jesus take the cross up the Via Della Rosa, and they knew the ultimate destination for anyone walking with their cross up that hill would be that they would be crucified. And of course, they'd heard the stories from Mary and other women who had been with Jesus when he died, that Jesus was dead. And so when they looked inside the tomb, they couldn't really believe this story that someone could come back from such a cruel death. It wasn't that Jesus fainted on the cross. It wasn't that Jesus somehow faked his death. You can't fake a crucifixion on a cross, not a Roman cross. Now fast forward these two days when they thought that Jesus' story was finished, but God's all-powerful, sacrificial, endless love proved them wrong. What they didn't know is that God's love in Jesus would be so powerful that it would culminate in the resurrection because God's sacrificial love is more powerful than death itself. You see, hate has an expiration date, but God's love is endless and eternal. And Jesus' resurrection proves it. And Jesus wants you to know that he loves you to the end. The end of your story on earth really is only the beginning of your story that God will be writing in eternity. Some people believe that God is only interested in filling us with shame or guilt or judgment. And Jesus wants you to know he loves you to the end. He wants you to know that even if you've kind of messed up, it's not a reflection of you in terms of that God has rejected you. No, that's a human story that God's going to reject you because you've messed up. Jesus showed us that his love for us was so powerful that he goes to the cross. He takes on the shame. He takes on all the pain and all the people's lives that have messed up. He takes it all to the cross. But then he rose from the dead so we can experience total, unconditional, life-transforming love. And that's the story of the cross and of the resurrection. And you see this incredibly powerful, irreversible, irresistible love of Jesus has the power to dispel your fear, your loneliness, or despair. He wants to move you to life from death. So maybe today you're just on the outside looking in and Jesus is waiting for you to take one more step in faith so you can experience that perfect love that God has for you. The prime reason that Jesus suffered and died on that old rugged cross is so that we could know God's eternal, self-sacrificing, endless, irreversible, life-changing resurrection love that's love at the heart of the universe that drives us to do some crazy things for love. God did some crazy things for love. None crazier than having Jesus, his son, step out of heaven and come to earth and show us on the cross the incredible, irreversible, sacrificial, crazy love that God has for us. Now, God knows that you can't force anyone to love him but you can receive love. So today, as you stand before the mystery of the empty tomb, why not take that next step in the journey of faith, whatever it is for you. Maybe it's a step to believe in God and in Jesus. Maybe it's to believe in eternal life and the power of eternal love, God's eternal love for you. Maybe it is to read it, dedicate your life to this amazing God. Whatever step you need to take, Let's just be bold to kind of go into that empty tomb and to believe the words of the scripture and to believe in the power of the resurrection 
that gives us power to live each day to the fullest and to love to the fullest extent and to experience the love of God in so many new ways. Let's just take a moment in silence. eternal and loving God. Thank you so much that there is never a moment where you are not present to us. Never a person you don't see. I thank you that we stand in this moment on Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning, remembering the crucifixion and resurrection of your son Jesus. We're here not simply because it's the most amazing thing that has happened in human history, but we're here to declare our love for you and to receive your love for us. So we're here today because the resurrection keeps happening every day. Because every day we open our hearts to you, you keep moving us from death to life. And so Jesus, we welcome you into our lives in a fresh new way this Easter morning. And we invite you to work in our lives to bring us to the fullness of love that sets us free. Amen. We want to invite the choir to come back up and lead us in a, another song.